presidential motorcade, as we said, five cars of them. Essentially, this is the presidential escort, the, uh, the inaugural committee's escort, uh, led today by Senator Charles Mathias from Maryland, who's the chairman of the committee, Tip O'Neill, who is the uh, Speaker of the House, Representative Jim O'Neill, uh, Robert Dole, who's the majority leader in, in the Senate, all escorting the president, as is tradition, from the White House up to the law library entrance at the east side of the Capitol, across from the Supreme Court, which has been in session today. President Mrs. Reagan getting out now and being met by Larry Smith, who is the Sergeant of Arms of the Senate, and Jack Russ, who is the Sergeant of Arms in the House, and Mike Von Fremd is there uh, for us. Mike? Peter, he's just walking in now. This is what's called the law library entrance. The president, uh, with Speaker O'Neill, is going in. The security here has been incredibly tight. As a matter of fact, uh, Mayor Marion Barry, the D.C. mayor, tried to get in that exact same entrance just a few minutes ago, and uh, he was politely told, Mr. Mayor, no thanks, uh, you can't come in here. This is the president's entrance. Perhaps they're still a little upset with uh, the mayor over the weather that he, that he, uh, he has turned out in Washington this day. Uh, and so now he's inside, and we'll go back to you. Gentlemen. Thank you, Mike. The president's going to go into a holding room for a few minutes now while the actual inauguration ceremony gets completely established and everybody gets in place, and we'll be right back. Federal committee items are sold in department stores. God must have been sitting on my shoulder. And committee officials expect even greater sales after the inauguration through mail orders. American buttons, what kind you like, man? But street vendors are also making money, selling items the committee hasn't approved. I've always made out better this way than I have working with the committee. So after looking at all of these wonderful souvenirs, I've decided that a $1,750 Eagle is just a little bit too expensive for my tastes. And some of these other items, like inaugural hats and flashing buttons that sing the Star Spangled Banner, just really aren't my style. I've decided that the ones you eat are the ones for me, so I'm going to go for the President's Lunch. It's a candy bar, and it's a real bargain at $1.60. Well, there will be no people along the parade route today to buy all from all of those uh, vendors who expect to make big dough, and that's too bad for them as well. Frozen out. Frozen out, indeed. The president and the vice president at the Capitol right now in a holding room on the east side of the Capitol, waiting to go into the rotunda. There is the door of the, of the uh, holding room. They will go from there up two floors into the rotunda itself. We can show you through the magic of television and my John Madden-like device, the Capitol and the floor plan. Here is the first floor. And the president entered right here, came in this way, and he's in this holding room here. He'll then go up two floors, and eventually he'll end up in this area right in here for the ceremonies. He was originally scheduled, of course, to go out here, that now all has been canceled, of course, because of the inclement weather in Washington, D.C., 140,000 people. Many of them, I expect, were not disappointed. I talked to a couple of the President's California friends yesterday, and they were saying, thank God he made that decision. I wasn't going to sit out there. And health would have been endangered for a lot well, of A lot of people come here for the parties. There will be nine or ten galas tonight. Um, somebody added it up. If, if you and your wife came to the inauguration here, uh, and stayed in a medium-priced hotel, it would be about $3,000, not counting your airfare. Pretty expensive. All the limousines in town were sold out, even though for a four-day period, 2400 bucks inclusive, that's tip and chauffeur, and there wasn't a car available. rent a wreck I'm even told. The uh, rent-a-car outfit was down to its last automobile I as well. that was the Democratic so, the <laughs> Well, they may be, but Republicans have to use transportation wherever and whenever they can. And the ceremonies that we expected to see today, of course, have been changed as a result of all of this. The traditional wardrobes of inaugurals, black tie and tails and evening gowns now have been replaced. The symbols instead are long johns and stocking caps, I would think, for inauguration 1985. Inaugurations were held in March, giving legislators and George Bush, politicians leaders of Congress coming in there from around the country a chance to get back to Washington when transportation was not so easy. A great many people, I suspect, wishing it were still done in March. This rotunda is huge. There have been some very sad scenes in there over the years. The statesmen uh, who have died lay in state there on a public file through. Mrs. Reagan. Twenty of our national leaders have lain in state there, and we'll be right back after these messages and a word from your local station.
gusto. The President of the United States, accompanied on his right by Senator McAfee, on his left by the Speaker of the House, Thomas P. Tip O'Neill. So the ceremonies now begin. The President going up two floors to the rotunda, and Roger Mudd is in the rotunda where we can hear him if we can't see him. Roger? Uh, Tom, when you take a huge rotunda and put into it uh, the House and the Senate and the Diplomatic Corps, and then you add a Marine Corps band, you've got a uh, very tight-knit group. The great losers in the, uh, in the rearrangement of plans today were the wives. There are no diplomatic wives and no governor's wives, although a few have managed to squeeze in. 400 have jammed into this rotunda. Uh, and they have seen in the last few minutes the arrival of uh, the Chief Justice and Mrs. Berger, uh, Vice President and Mrs. Bush. Mrs. Reagan came in almost unannounced from the Senate side, had uh, literally to uh, squeeze her way through a uh, crowd of uh, congressmen and senators. But you could see her easily because of that bright uh, royal uh, blue uh, outfit she has on. Mrs. Bush has a powder blue. They've obviously coordinated that beforehand, but they are now in place. And in a moment or two, we'll get the President of the United States. Roger, that painting that we see in the background is called The Embarkation of the Pilgrims at Delft Haven, Holland, July 22nd, 1620. Just so people are wondering at home, we'll be seeing more of those paintings because they are situated around the rotunda. Well, there are paintings. There is the uh, Declaration of Independence. There is the surrender of Burgoyne, the surrender of uh, Cornwallis. There is uh, the uh, signing of the, uh, uh, the ratification of the Constitution. There is the uh, blessing of Pocahontas, and there is any, the only thing we don't have, uh, Tom, is, uh, is uh, a contemporary painting, and they've deliberately kept it that way. In addition, there are a few pieces of statuary in the hall. President, Mr. Vice President, fellow citizens, we celebrate today the 50th inauguration of a President and Vice President of the United States and the beginning of a presidential term that brings us to the threshold of the third century of American constitutional government. I will ask the Reverend Timothy S. Healy, President of Georgetown University, to offer the invocation. Let us offer this prayer for the President and Vice President and their families, for the people and government of these United States, for men and women of goodwill everywhere, captive and free, who watch us today. Please join me in saying the words our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> 